Welcome everyone to this series of lectures on the applied anatomy and physiology of yoga. Actually, this set of lectures is not just about yoga. It's also about all types of physical exercise. I'll be talking about the types of physical yoga that are often practiced uh, these days and also about the other types of physical exercise including the uh, exercises done particularly from China and uh, Japan things like Qigong and Tai Chi which are types of Taoist yoga and uh, this information also pertains to the types of um, exercises which sometimes are referred to as calisthenics practiced in aerobics classes and, and stretch classes, exercise classes practiced in the West. Um, these uh, lectures will be supplementing information coming from the book entitled Applied Anatomy and Physiology of Yoga, which is uh, written by me, Simon Borg Olivia, and Bianca Matchless. Um, the two of us have uh, designed uh, this information and collated this information based on our experiences as yoga teachers and physiotherapists. Essentially what we teach is traditional Hatha yoga but with an understanding of um, exercise based physiotherapy and Western medical science. And one of the main purposes of this series of lectures will be to try and interpret uh, exercise and physical yoga as it's practiced and, and taught in the East, um, along with the Eastern understanding of the body and the Eastern understanding of, um, of how they practice exercise, and then compare, contrast, and interpret uh, with the information from Western uh, medical science and exercise-based physiotherapy. I will, throughout these exercises, be demonstrating and showing you some of the exercises, physical exercises and breathing exercises, and uh, at some point it may be useful for some of you to try and do some of these exercises. But along the way I'll be showing you safe and less safe forms of the exercises. It's possible, and I'll be showing you how to do this, to actually practice less safe versions of postures and exercises. And uh, you know, sometimes by doing this it can give you an understanding about the safest way of teaching, the safest way of practicing. In fact, there's no such thing as a wrong exercise or a, um, uh, a definitely don't do exercise, but there's just less safe and more safe versions. And the safest way of doing something actually won't teach you anything. But it is potentially uh, possible that you can injure yourself or someone else if you don't appreciate the risks and the dangers. So. Uh, before you begin any of the exercises, please take three precautions in mind. It's easy to overdo yourself mentally if, when doing an exercise, you try and apply every instruction. So while doing a physical exercise, only do what comes into your mind safely and simply without compromising yourself. And don't expect to understand everything in one go. Don't even expect to understand all these lectures in one listening. The second thing is, on a physiological level, when working with physical exercises, don't try and force your breath in any way. The best way to learn a physical exercise is to do it with your own natural breathing. If you force your breath, it's easy to suffer repercussions from breathing inappropriately, and these might include things like headache at a simplest level, or you know, if you really force the breath, you could actually kill yourself. Um, also, by forcing the breath, and especially over-breathing, you can actually reduce the blood flow to the brain and get dizzy. You can get uh, nauseous as well. By over-breathing, also, it overstimulates your nervous system. And so you can become jittery or nervous and 
even the skin can react with uh, skin rashes and uh, you can become even emotional by overdoing the nervous system, by over-breathing. So the simplest thing is when you're doing a physical exercise, until it's mastered, just use your own natural breath. And when you are starting to work with the breath, and occasionally I'll give instructions that will indicate the breath will make it easier and safer for the pose physically, then the two simplest uh, instructions you might follow are firstly, when exhaling, exhale fully, as this will clear your lungs, and also it will help you engage your trunk muscles, help you firm your abdomen, for example, which will help stabilize your spine. The second thing is, when working with physical exercise, that if you do focus on an in-breath, it should be a little in-breath, not a big in-breath. Whenever you make a big inhalation, generally it will cause the abdomen and or the chest to expand, and that will usually weaken the spine, and if while doing a physical exercise your spine is compromised, it makes the spine more compromised. Also, a large in-breath to the chest or the abdomen can cause uh, an effect physiologically, which I'll discuss further later, and, uh, and also it can cause an effect which will actually decrease blood flow to the brain for physiological and physical reasons, which I'll come to later as well. On a third level, don't overdo your physical body. The instructions that you'll be given throughout these exercises, throughout these lectures, and uh, you know, in the exercises we give in the lectures, can potentially be very, very strong. So, on a physical level, don't overdo yourself. Generally, bend less, tense less, and move slower. Those three things will make an exercise a little bit safer and a lot safer if you do them a lot. So bending less, there's less chance of injuring uh, the joints, the ligaments and your tendons. Don't bend so far. And tensing the muscles less also will, risk, uh, will reduce the risk of increasing blood pressure and possibly overstraining muscles. And if you move slower, there's less risk of um, invoking, say, for example, the stretch reflex, which can make muscles tense unexpectedly. And also, by moving slower, if you're about to do a dangerous movement and you don't realize that it's dangerous, by moving slowly, you're less likely to actually come to the point of injuring yourself. Eventually, you can do anything very, very quickly, but it's better to learn it slowly. So these instructions on a physical level will be useful. Tense less, bend less, and move slower. And at the same time, try and follow the basic idea that whenever you're bending the body, there's a risk that you could injure yourself, you could damage your joint, and you can usually stabilize that joint and prevent it from being injured if you tense the muscles around that joint a little bit more. So. A general guide is, if you're bending your body more than you would in everyday life, it helps if you tense that part of the body a little bit more than you would in everyday life. And so say, for example, you're bending your lower back into a back bending or forward bend movement, then if you tense the region around the lower back, that will help protect that part. If you're taking your knee to a place that it wouldn't normally go to in your everyday life, then it helps if you tense your knee a little bit more than you would in everyday life. If you're, ten if you're taking your shoulder to a place that it normally wouldn't go in your everyday life, then tense the muscles around the shoulder a little bit more than you would in everyday life. But if you're not bending very f far, you don't have to tense so much. So when I'm giving instructions, I'll say tense this muscle or tense that muscle. It doesn't have to tense very much if you're not bending very far. If the tension that I'm offering you to do does not feel appropriate for you, no problems. Tense less, but in that case, bend less. 
please be cautious. There are many things that can happen when doing exercises and uh, stretching and tensing the muscles does not have to come uh, into the equation before some of the exercises can already be very strong for some people. The simple act of taking your head down below the heart can already for some people become an uncomfortable exercise even if you might not be stretching the back of the leg, even if you might not tense a single muscle, even if you might not be breathing in any specific way, the simple act of changing your body's orientation to gravity can already be something which affects the body. And I'll be discussing that a little bit further later on. Just please be cautious. So to summarize then, uh, don't overthink. Don't uh, expect to understand everything in one go. Don't over-breathe. Your own natural breathing works fine in the beginning. And uh, don't overstretch or over-tense. Keep the physical body safe. There are many benefits of working with this type of information. By understanding how the body works, we can more safely approach exercises and gain a lot of physical value from doing them in a safe and appropriate way. The main physical purpose of doing this type of exercise, of doing the yoga that uh, is traditionally taught in India and the Taoist yogas, the qigongs and the, and the martial arts exercises that are done in other parts of, of Asia, in particular China, um, the main purpose is to enhance the flow of energy and consciousness through the system. And by getting this flow of energy and consciousness happening, it basically allows your body to be a lot more energized throughout the day. It means you have to sleep less, it means you can eat less. And it's usually eating, it's, it's been proven to be one of the things that, that reduces people's life uh, span the most. So the less you have to eat in your life to function normally, the better it is for your health. And, uh, and also, if you can understand how the body can communicate within itself, you're much more able to heal injuries. So if you have an injury in your knee, for example, the ability to communicate and circulate energy and information throughout your body means you're much more able to heal a knee injury. It's also meaning that you're less likely to injure yourself if the flow of energy and information is, uh, is working inside you properly. You're less likely to injure yourself when you're doing an exercise. And so this type of information will help you in many ways on a physical level but as I'll discuss in the next section the main purpose of the different types of yoga is to establish a connection within yourself which can eventually become a connection between yourself and other people between yourself and the earth and the meaning of yoga is to establish some sort of union and by taking the time to connect with yourself, it means you've got a better chance of connecting with the rest of the world. And if everyone were to do this, it might make the world a better place.